January 1991, the desert sky burns with tracer fire. Iraqi tanks advance through Kuwait. Allied jets rule the air. But let's change one single thing. At a secret base, hidden under camouflage nets, an F-35 Lightning II waits. A fighter jet from the future, ready to take off in a war fought more than 30 years ago. What if an F-35 joined the Gulf War? Imagine 1991, the desert sky glowing with explosions, and suddenly an invisible F-35 appears, unseen by radar, capable of destroying Iraqi defenses before they even know it's there. Could a single fighter from the future win an entire war from the past? Let's find out. Scenario rules. Only one F-35, no fleet support, no modern satellites, no nearby allied bases, real fuel, about three hours of combat flight, real ammo, only what it carries on board, nothing else. The jet arrives alone, it must fight alone and survive alone. The F-35 Lightning II, description. What is this intruder from the future? A fifth generation fighter, built to be invitable, to see without being seen, to strike first. Key features, total stealth. Its shape deflects radar waves, its coating absorbs signals. The radars of 1991 barely detected, just a blip like a bird. Speed, supersonic cruise, Mach 1.6, over 2,000 kilometers per hour, without afterburners, faster than any Iraqi fighter. Sensors, AESA radar, scans 360 degrees, tracks hundreds of targets at once, sees 200 kilometers away, shares data in real time, though here there's no one to share with. Armament, 4 AM-120 missiles inside the bay, active radar guided, range over 100 kilometers, two AIM-9X sidewinders, heat seekers for close combat, a GAU-22 25 mm cannon, 180 rounds, fires 4,000 shots per minute, internal bay for guided bombs, in this case, four GBU-32s, 500 kilograms each. Accuracy, less than one meter of error. Maneuverability, thrust vectoring, turns at impossible angles, climbs to 15,000 meters in minutes, flies higher than any Iraqi missile. But it's not perfect. Limited range, complex maintenance, no technical support, one failure, and it's over. The Iraqi threat in the Gulf War. Iraq had the fourth largest air force in the world, over 700 combat aircraft, hundreds of anti-air batteries, thousands of surface-to-air missiles. Enemy fighters, MiG-29 Fulcrum, top speed Mach 2.3, but only in a dive, old radar, short-range missiles. MiG-25 Foxbat, fast in a straight line, but poor maneuverability. Mirage F-1, French exports to Iraq, good in dogfights, but with outdated radar. Ground defenses, Soviet analog radars, slow to refresh, easy to deceive. SA-6 gameful, range 24 kilometers, command guided, needs line of sight. SA-8 gecko, mobile, dangerous at low altitude. ZSU-23-4 anti-aircraft artillery, four 23 millimeter cannons, fires 3,000 rounds per minute, but blind against stealth. Iraqi strategy, Mass formations, coordinated attacks, use of decoys, desert dispersion. Confidence in numbers, not technology. The attack begins. Night of January 17th, Operation Desert Storm begins. The F-35 takes off from an improvised strip, climbs in silence, activates stealth mode. No one sees it, no one hears it. First target, Baghdad radars. The jet flies at 30,000 feet. Enemy radar sweeps the sky, detects nothing. At 150 kilometers out, it locks onto four SA-6 radars, fires two AM-120s. The missiles drop silently, then ignite. Impact, four explosions, four radars gone. Iraqi operators stare at blank screens. Total confusion. Enemy reaction, sirens blare in Baghdad. No one understands what happened. Reports of ghosts on radar, Central Command orders all systems activated. More radars, more targets for the F-35. Air superiority in the first hours. 
the jet moves north, finds a formation of MiG-29s, eight on patrol. At 80 kilometers, it launches four AIM-120s. Four impacts, four MiGs fall in flames. The remaining pilots panic, search for the enemy, see nothing. The F-35 is already gone. Attacking air bases. al takadim Air Base. 20 planes on the ground. The F-35 descends low, opens its bay, drops two GBU-32s. Two hangars explode. 10 MiG-23s destroyed. Not a single shot fired in return. Iraqi fighters attempt intercept. Two Mirage F-1s take off, climb at maximum speed. The F-35 detects them at 100 kilometers, turns, approaches from behind, fires two sidewinders. Two explosions. Two mirages gone. The pilots never knew what hit them. Scale of destruction. In three hours, 12 radars destroyed, 20 planes on the ground, 8 in the air, 40 confirmed kills, zero damage to the F-35. Iraq loses 10% of its air force in one night by a single jet. Iraqi command in chaos. Generals shouting over radios. Reports of invisible attacks. Planes vanish without cause. Radars fail without explanation. Saddam demands answers. No one has any. He orders all radars shut down. Worst mistake yet. The F-35 attacks without opposition. F-35 limitations, but nothing lasts forever. Fuel runs fast in combat. After four hours, critical alert. Ammo nearly gone. Only two missiles and 50 cannon rounds left. The jet must choose. Keep fighting or return to base. Range problems. Combat radius, 800 kilometers. In heavy combat, less than 600 kilometers. No aerial refueling. No allied carriers. Just one secret base deep in the desert. Returning means risking everything. Could the F-35 win alone? No. It dominates the opening hours. Destroys key targets. Changes the beginning, not the end. Wars aren't won by one plane. They're won by logistics, support, and time. The F-35 has none of those. A single F-35 doesn't win the Gulf War, but it transforms it, shortens the air phase, saves Allied lives, but only for a moment. War is more than technology. It's endurance, numbers, time. Technological superiority shines, but fades without logistics. The desert doesn't forgive loneliness, nor time, nor the reality of a war that lasted 42 days. The F-35 was a comet, bright, fleeting, unforgettable. And now it's your turn. What do you think would really happen if a future F-35 had to fight in the Gulf War? Would it change everything or not at all? Leave it in the comments.